As the world was struggling to climb out of the Great Depression, a new crisis loomed, one that threatened civilization itself. Adolf Hitler came to power when Germany was still reeling from her defeat in the First World War. Its gold reserves were empty, its currency worthless. With a promise to restore Germany to its former glory, Hitler set out to rebuild its empire. To do so, he needed gold. It's critical uh, to, to understand uh, the German gold reserves in 1939 were were not very large, about $200 million. And they had already gone through most of that in building up the war machine. They could not purchase finished manufactured items from abroad. And they could not purchase critical raw materials uh, with the Reichsmark because it was a worthless currency. Their only alternative was gold. As the German army rolled over Europe, it plundered each nation's gold reserves. In 1938, Czechoslovakia with its $30 million in gold. In 1939, Poland with $85 million in gold. This started in, uh, in 1938, actually, with the Anschluss in Austria. Uh, they had taken the Austrian gold reserves, and then in 1939, when they finished occupying Czechoslovakia, they took the uh, Czech gold reserves. As the war started, as they would overrun a particular country, they would take the gold. Much of Hitler's golden plunder was stored at the Reichsbank in Berlin. But the tide was turning for Hitler's thousand-year Reich. Day and night bombing by the Allied air forces systematically destroyed Hitler's war machine, attacking at its very heart the industrial infrastructure built with the help of stolen gold. On February 3, 1945, more than 900 Allied bombers dropped nearly 2,300 tons of bombs on Berlin. The city was devastated and the Reichsbank nearly destroyed. In February 1945, uh, perhaps the remaining gold reserves that were in the Reichsbank itself were uh, loaded on the trucks, uh, I think, with uh, captured uh, laborers, probably French, uh, and shipped uh, to uh, Merkur, a town in uh, Thuringia in uh, southern Germany. That spring, Patton's Third Army rolled across Germany like a juggernaut. Entering Merkur's on April 4th, they heard rumors of a top secret cargo recently trucked in from Berlin and buried in a nearby potassium mine. Curious, several GIs decided to investigate. Half a mile down in the mine, they stepped off an elevator and froze in their tracks. The tunnel was blocked by a large steel door. A message was sent to Patton. What should they do? Patton's reply, blow the door. The Army engineers was, were going to blow down the door until someone realized you could, with just a half a stick of dynamite, you could blow up the bricks next to the door and, and not have to worry about the vault. Inside were more than 7,000 carefully stacked bags. What they found inside those bags was so unbelievable that three of the most powerful men in the world had to see it for themselves. George Patton, his superior Omar Bradley, and the Allied Supreme Commander in Europe, Dwight Eisenhower. The brass had come to behold the gold. More than 8,000 bars of gold bullion, 2,000 bags of gold Reichsmarks, British pounds, French francs, and American $20 gold pieces, and hundreds of bags of gold coins from other countries. As Patton walked toward the back of the mine, he noticed an eerie cache of loot. At the back of the room was primarily the property that had been taken from concentration camp, victims stored in suitcases, just piled full of silverware, uh, wedding bands, gold teeth. Each bag, box, and trunk was carefully inventoried and labeled with a tag marked Melmer. And Melmer was the German SS officer that made trips to the camps, the concentration camps, and collected the, the gold teeth, the wedding bands, the gold watches, and took them to Berlin. And he made at least 77 deliveries during the war of this.